Okay, uh, welcome back to another episode of uh, what we have decided to call oh, yeah. uh, Smarty Pints. Smarty Pints. Because you're getting wisdom about beer. Yeah, yep. yeah that sums it up. Because there's a lot of wisdom in this brain. Yeah. Some of it about beer. Yes, yes. So our previous video, we went over how to use a hydrometer. And uh, one, of the, one of the points that we want to go back over is um, if your hydrometer is not um, calibrated properly, if you're over 1.000, and you happen to be at 1.003 or 1.004, you subtract that. Subtract. You subtract that. Do not add. Yeah. And uh, the opposite goes for if you are under. If you are under your 1.000, you add that. That makes sense. Yep. See? It all makes sense after you get some feedback from your viewers. <laughs> Thank you for that feedback. Also, in regards to the feedback, um, we got a question in regards to uh, pre boil gravity readings. How do you use your hydrometer to get your pre boil uh, gravity readings with your hydrometer? I mean, if you don't have a refractometer, which some people don't, how do you go about doing that? Uh, well, this uh, brought up something that I hadn't heard of. Uh, I think uh, Gash brought this up. Is if you are taking your uh, pre boil gravity readings with a hydrometer, it's important to cool down the sample. Because if you're familiar with a hydrometer, actually, let me just grab one off the shelf while we're talking about it, make it easier with some visual aids. Uh, they have this little paper inside here, and it is glued to the inside of the glass. Uh, now, what uh, Gash had said is if you have this in a hot sample, is that the heat can loosen the glue that's holding that paper in place where it was calibrated. Okay. So you could run the risk of that paper shifting, which would throw off your readings. Um, that being said, I've been doing hot pre-boil gravity readings for years, and my hydrometer is 19 years old, and it's still calibrated to 1.000 in the previous video. So, uh, but that also being said, uh, from now on I am going to cool my samples because that uh, it doesn't make sense. That's it's a right. valid point. Uh, because you want to you want to remember that your hydrometer you want to check it at about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Most hydrometers are calibrated to that temperature. However, there are temperature ch correction charts available. I mean, John Palmer even uh, wrote about how you can do temperature correction charts. And yeah, Beersmith has a really great hydrometer uh, correction tool. You just type in you know what temperature your hydrometer corrects to. What temperature your sample is and what that reading is and it will give you the adjusted corrected value and if you don't have beersmith or um, what's it mash pro or something like that any any of those uh, beer making software uh, what you got there beersmith. Here, Julie, show, show everybody. <laughs> beersmith. beersmith. Um, you can just go on Google Google uh, hydrometer uh, temperature correction bam you'll find a lot of results so um, now that we've gone over that portion, let's go into the actual pre-boil checking. You got your hydrometer or refractometer, and you've gotten your uh, you got your runnings out. You got it in the boil pot. You want to stir it up real good. Make sure that those sugars and starches are all mixed up. You're not stratified. Yep. Yeah, you want to have a nice solution going. You take your sample, and um, what what do you do with your pre-boil gravity reading? Oh uh, yeah, it's uh, a good question. Uh, basically, the whole point of taking a pre-boil gravity reading is to try to predict what your post-boil or original gravity reading is going to be. Uh, this is important because uh, the different gravities that uh, you start out with um, are going to affect your perception of the hops in the beer. Uh, you know, the higher the, the gravity, the less you'll be able to perceive the hops and vice versa. So. Let's say you take a pre-boil gravity reading and you realize that your post-boil gravity is going to be higher than you thought because your efficiency was better for some reason, then you can know to adjust your hops, add more hops. Um, or if your uh, pre-boil gravity is going to predict you having a low OG, you can maybe add some malt extract or something like that or you know just adjust your volumes. Sure. But I think what Graham is getting at is how do you calculate that? Um, it's really simple. Uh, for math's sake, let's say we're starting with a five gallon batch uh, and your pre-boil gravity reading is a, what do you say, a 1050. Um, so even though it's a five gallon batch, you're going to start with, let's say, six gallons 
in the uh, brew pot because you're going to um, you know, basically uh, allow for the evaporation. So let's say you have 1050 as your pre-boil gravity reading in six gallons. So take 50 times six, that equals 300 gravity points. So you boil down through your, your 60 minute boil, 90 minute boil, whatever you do, and at the end of your boil, you have five gallons. So you take that 300, divide it by five, that equals 60. So your end uh, of the boil gravity, or OG, should be 1060. So really easy to calculate. Yeah, all you're going by is uh, after the decimal point, you don't really care about the, the 10 portion. You're just right. going by the just the uh, um, 60 points, 50 points, stuff like that. And you know that also goes into, we were talking before we shot this video, about how you, you, sh you should have an idea of how your system works um, in regards to the evaporation rate, what yeah. your... Your benchmarks are really important to set on your system. You know, know where in, on your kettle five gallons is, 10 gallons is. Uh, know, you know, if you eyeball your certain, uh, your boil, if you have a, a nice rolling boil going, you know that if uh, it's rolling in that manner that you're going to get approximately one gallon of boil off Sparging. per hour. Sparging, yeah. Sparging is important too. A lot of people make a mistake, they either undersparge or oversparge. Mm -hmm. And then you just wind up with either overshooting or undershooting your gravity points. Yeah. So Graham, you brought up a good point earlier about uh, off camera, about uh, maybe doing like a test uh, boil. Oh, that's true. Yeah, for, for beginners who don't know their system, a good way to test out how your evaporation rate is working is just take uh, whatever you use for your boil pot, Fill it up with a normal amount of water that would equal about the same amount as you know your, your beer. If it's five gallons of beer that you normally do, put five gallons of water in. Uh, let it boil. Let it come to a boil and uh, do it for about an hour. And once the hour is all, uh, all done, measure the amount that you have afterwards, and that should give you a good idea of at that setting for that flame. You should know what your evaporation rate is, and you can uh, figure out um, how much water is supposed to go into your boil kettle prior. Um, your boiling. Yeah, there are certain uh, environmental factors that may skew your numbers, like uh, uh, what Chris was saying earlier. Uh, he's off camera. Uh, the uh, humidity uh, of the area that you're uh, that you're brewing in can can throw off that evaporation rate. Uh, you know, if you don't have preset marks on your uh, you know stovetop or your your turkey fryer or your burner, um, you know, you might not be. Uh, giving it the exact amount of flame uh, in your batch that you did in your test run, but uh, at least you get a, a general idea of the neighborhood you're going to be in. And then as you keep brewing more and more batches, you really get to know your system intimately and can adjust for that. And I'm sure also it plays into the factor of uh, us people in the uh, north Midwest area uh, where we actually have snow and the temperatures drop below 50 degrees. Uh, the, the boil takes longer if you do it in your garage or outside as opposed to doing it in the summertime where it's not a problem. Yes. So, so you got to take that into effect too. So uh, or take that into uh, consideration. So um, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, I don't know any other points, but uh, yeah. So take those points. That's a, a, another good thing to think about with your hydrometer. Your uh, pre-boil, your post-boil readings, how to do your pre-boil, uh, and uh, well, I guess we could also go over how to, you know, some people who put it into a test jar, if you want to get it to that temperature, cool it off. Uh, oh, yeah, place. yeah. Uh, what I do personally, because I take uh, pH readings of my mash too, um, and uh, those uh, are temperature corrected, similar to a uh, hydrometer, is I just have a little mason jar, and I'll take a sample in that, uh, cap it off, you know, you're at 150 some odd degrees, then I'll just put it in a cold water bath, yes. you know, just like you would uh, post boil if you don't have an immersion chiller or a plate chiller. You know, just get a cold water bath and, uh, and let it chill down to uh, close to ideal temperatures for your readings. And you don't have to worry about sanitizing that because you're just going to put it back in the boil pot and it's yeah. going to cook off whatever got in contact with it. So that's pretty much how to do it. Just let it chill down in any way you want. Uh, um, ice bath is usually the fastest way. Yeah. So with uh, that being said, I think that that's a nice way to wrap this video up. I agree. All right, so cheers to everybody. Cheers. Catch you in another video. Yeah, keep those questions coming.